live from our seven Tasmania studios. Your nightly news with Kim Miller begins now. It's tonight. A coroner has heard harrowing details of a woman's final moments with her partner before he was swept away in waters south of Launceston. Three people perished in the deadly 2016 Tasmanian floods. Two of the victims, the focus of an inquest this week. And a warning, some viewers may find details in this story confronting. A time of great pain for tight-knit communities. Floods ravaged northern Tasmania in June 2016, with homes and animals lost, while three people, Peter Watson, Trevor Foster and Mary Alford, were killed. A coronial inquest into the two men's deaths began today. Coroner Simon Cooper hearing from Karen Cassidy, the partner of Mr Watson, who died while delivering newspapers on the morning of June 7th. She says she joined him to provide an extra set of eyes, telling the court it's what you do when you care for someone. They became trapped on Leylands Road just outside Evandale. As rising waters forced them onto the roof of their van, they began calling family. Before she said to Peter, you know we're going to die, don't you? A short time later, she said he slipped into waters. His body wasn't recovered for more than two weeks. Ms Cassidy was rescued hours later after finding debris to hold on to. Overwhelmed by emotion, she told the court Mr Watson was a lovely fella and it was something she didn't know if she would get over. The coroner also hearing from Samuel Lloyd, a policeman who assisted in their call. He also became upset, telling the hearing he wondered whether he should have gone into the water. Coroner Cooper reassuring him, saying had Mr Lloyd done that, he would be holding a fourth one. The inquest runs until Friday, with witnesses, emergency services and Hydro Tasmania among those providing evidence. Ms Alford's inquest will take place in September. John Hunt, 7 Tasmania News. Tasmania's Energy Minister has reaffirmed the state is pushing to charge interstate customers for the Marinus Link build. It came as protesters took aim at other major energy projects, saying they have no social licence. Stanley's proposed wind farm is creating a bluster. Some residents simply don't want it. Stanley is one of Tasmania's iconic locations and we would like to protect that iconic location. Groups opposing energy projects gathered outside today's Tasmanian Energy Development Conference, pleading they're not against renewables, just the ones in their backyard. You don't have to build 240 metre high towers in the central plateau, near the lakes, in the visual area, right next to the highway, to get energy production. There are a lot of alternatives. If they're bulldozing the Lungana Valley, which is a biodiversity hotspot, they're driving out not only the wildlife but our tourism operators who are in terrible trouble because of what TAS networks are doing to us. Upstairs were presentations from the industry's movers, shakers and electricity makers, including the team behind Marinus Link. It's a need to change a rule that reflects more fairly where the net market benefits reside and those net market benefits largely reside on mainland Australia. As reported by Nightly News 7 Tasmania last month, the state government says the $3.5 billion cable isn't viable if interstate customers can't be charged for its cost. It is necessary um, and uh, it's not a goer unless uh, we can receive uh, a fair cost allocation. So we don't want a bad deal for Tasmania. The Energy Minister said he didn't want to deal with the hypothetical situation of what to do if those rules don't change. Despite receiving very real assurances, they're unlikely to do so before a final investment decision is due. Potentially solving that power pickle is Labor. Uh, the project should go ahead. It's a good project. It's been talked about for a long period of time, but, but not enough has happened. Having pledged $20 billion to rewire the nation, Marinus is one of the projects in line for funding. A potential jump start for a long-awaited project. Josh Duggan, 7 Tasmania News. The Prime Minister has made his first visit to Tasmania since winning the May election. Anthony Albanese hit out at the state government for slow progress on addressing the housing crisis, but he couldn't say how many affordable homes his government would build. 
Returning to his roots, Anthony Albanese toured public housing units in Bridgewater. So, yeah, have you got solar on the roof? Or we haven't. Um, but we need that. We, yeah. <laughs> Visiting Tasmania for the first time since winning the top job, the PM and his new housing minister know the importance of having a safe place to call home. Uh, nothing's more important in determining people's opportunities in life than a secure roof over their head. I know it because I've lived it. I grew up in public housing. I actually grew up and spent my first few years in this community in public housing. So it means a lot to be able to be back here today. St Joseph Affordable Homes tasked with constructing 500 properties ready for market. There's no, no, no sort of shortage of work at the moment. If, if we're doing this, then next week we'll go to another job, to another job, and it keeps on going. The Prime Minister promising to build 30,000 affordable homes in five years, but couldn't say how many of those will be allocated to Tasmania. It comes as a new report shows it's cheaper to buy than rent 41% of dwellings across the state. The PM hitting out at years of slow progress under the state Liberals. There were some uh, 1,300 people on the waiting list for social housing here in Tasmania in 2017. Uh, last year, that had grown to 4,500. Uh, we're concerned uh, with the housing register and the wait list and we want to get it down. Our objective is to address the housing and homelessness uh, challenges that we have in Tasmania. More than 4,000 Tasmanians are languishing on the social housing wait list and providers say they're struggling to keep up with demand to increase supply on the ground. I think the, the challenge is higher than just 4,500 people sitting on a social housing wait list and I think the result of that is an opportunity to increase new supply opportunities. A new challenge for a new government. Ainsley Kosh, 7 Tasmania News. Protesters gathered at the steps of Parliament House to oppose legislation which would make the demonstration unlawful. The Bob Brown Foundation says if it passes the Legislative Council tonight, it won't stop Tasmanians from standing up for their beliefs. These laws will be used to stop people um, who aren't intended, like environmentalists who, and, and Aboriginal people who aren't the prime intent of these laws, will be arrested. The state government says the changes will protect Tasmanian businesses' right to operate and workers' safety. Tasmania's COVID death toll has risen overnight. A man in his 50s from the state south has died, increasing the total number to 86. The number of new cases reported has sharply risen to 1,157. Three people are being cared for in ICU. 45 people are in hospital, with 12 being specifically treated for the virus. Swimmers have bared all at sunrise, conquering Hobart's chilly temperatures for the annual nude solstice swim. After a COVID impact event last year, more than 2,000 people turned out to celebrate the iconic end to the Dark Mofo Festival. Stripping off at dawn, a sea of red caps headed for icy waters. <coughs> Daring participants back for another year of nude solstice swimming in Hobart. There's something very cult-like about getting naked and running into the ocean with a bunch of people you don't know. You're trying to avoid eye contact, <laughs> you do the, the weird undressing underneath the hoodies, you know. Nine years on from its inception, the mid-winter dip continues to grow in popularity, attracting the eye of thousands of interstate visitors. I come from Queensland, so it was very significant and it was a wonderful, exhilarating experience. Especially with some of the border closures that happened just around the festival last year, those people who missed out, they're raring to go again. Age was no barrier for Val and Philip March in their 80s who ticked off the triumph. The amount of energy down where we were, I suspect it was everywhere, was just unbelievable. And everybody was so excited around us. It was just a great atmosphere. Some more courageous than others paddling out to the pontoon in a fearless nature. They obviously had fun on the pontoon, which is always a tradition, but uh, they were really safe out there. <laughs> The air temperature at Long Beach in Sandy Bay was a little warmer than past events, still sitting at around 6 degrees, but these brave souls were still willing to take the plunge. It's a real rebirth into the coming year. Free of clothing to bid farewell to another year of dark mofo. Sorry mum, I hope you didn't see too much. <laughs> All willing to see the lighter side of life after an uncertain two years. If you see a whale in the water, that's probably my ass. <laughs>
Grace Evans, 7 Tasmania News. Newly graduated police officers have commenced life on the beach in Tasmania. The newest fleet of 24 constables have begun serving their communities. They're stationed right across the state in Devonport, Burnie, Launceston and a number of Hobart precincts. It's a real honour to be um, in, in a position where, you know, you have that sort of community trust in, um, in us and, uh, yeah, it's, you know, pressure's on to, to, you know, do as good of a job as we, as we can. Well, today's my first day, so I'm very fresh. <laughs> um, it's been great so far, just learning lots and, yeah, steep learning curve, but, yeah, it's very exciting to get out there and, and start our new career. The group is now putting what they've learnt into practice. After spending months undergoing intensive training, they're looking forward to the future in their chosen career. Work is set to begin next month on new supported accommodation for young northwest coasters. Local firm Stubbs Construction has been awarded the $14 million tender to build the 25 single bedroom units at Taz Tafe's Moorville Road site. Yeah, a lot of these guys, they don't have that sustainability of a roof over their head. So it's about providing that so they can continue on with their study, do their apprenticeships, work through their employment options. It will also support a number of sub-trades across the board. Um, there'll be up to 70 people on site uh, and we look forward to delivering a quality project. It's the fourth facility of its kind in Tasmania. Children living with special needs can often miss out on participating in mainstream sports, but a Tasmanian program hopes to change that. Variety's Inclusion Sports Days were held around the state today, encouraging children of all abilities to get active. Making sure every child is able to participate in physical activity. Variety Tasmania is holding the first ever inclusion sports days across the state. Today is all about designing a program for children with disabilities to try sports um, and also create pathways for children to be involved in inclusive sports programs in their communities. The charity says children living with special needs are often excluded from mainstream physical education due to a lack of modification knowledge and adaptive equipment. But today, a group in Launceston was given the opportunity to play sports such as wheelchair basketball, AFL and 10-pin bowling at the Elfin Sports Centre, hoping to find an activity they like and can participate in the future. Variety's mission is that all children can play, no matter what their abilities are in life, and that they all have a fair go in life. Active Inclusion Sports Days have been running interstate for six years, with over 7,000 children taking part. Launceston's mayor says every child deserves a chance to play. Sport helps people develop their leadership skills, it helps people to have social inclusion and to get on with other people, it helps you to have fun. Children that have been in classes that you know haven't really engaged in sport before are actually having a go for the first time and it's incredible to see the confidence just boost in one day. A second round of inclusion days will be held later this year. Mark Zeta, 7 Tasmanian News. A popular exhibition at the Queen Victoria Art Gallery has been given a refresh. Herself celebrates the richness and range of artwork and sculptures by women. Works from local artist Leonie Duff, one of the many new paintings selected to be on show. It's a great joy to me to see it here in the collection, in the, the herself exhibition. Um, to, to find that you know my, my voice as a local artist is, is included in that is really wonderful. This is a chance for us to be able to kind of like to say that our collection is vast and we're actually able to make um, another offering to people coming in. The exhibit has been at the gallery for more than a year. The iconic comedy cabaret show Dracula's has landed in Hobart for the first time. Opening night is set to get underway in just over an hour to a sellout crowd. With more than four dec decades of experience, performers hope Tasmanians are prepared to get their teeth stuck into the resurrection tour. I want them to leave, you know, feeling like it was such a memorable moment they tell their friends and family about it. We always had such a huge following from Tassie and so we're so excited to finally bring this product on the road and Hobart was absolutely top of the list of places we had to come. West Point Casino will host the live spectacular over the next four nights with limited tickets still available. A North Launceston player is copping a one-match ban for abusing an umpire at the end of that epic contest against the Tigers decided with a kick after the siren. Nathan Pearce was reported in the protest at the end of that game. His punishment was reduced from two games to one thanks to an early guilty plea. 
while Lauderdale's Hayden Smith has been rubbed out for two matches after this rough tackle on Glenorchy's Josh Whitford. The penalty was harshened due to the impact on the player's head. First, she mined an opal in Mariana Tolo. Now, Launceston Tornado star Keely Froling has lured a new general manager to the club. Dan Jackson's taking over the role from Neil Gross and wants to take a leaf out of the Jack Jumpers book when it comes to game day. As the new boss behind the scenes, Dan Jackson wants to shoot the lights out when fans come to Elfin. Rather than just coming to watch a sports game, it's somewhere you can meet your friends, have a good night. He says lessons can be learned from the Jack Jumpers, which turns My State Bank Arena into a feast for the senses. The Jack Jumpers did a really good job in their game night with stuff like, you know, smoke and lights and all that kind of stuff. There's no reason we can't find some cost-effective, entertaining things to deliver to, to Tornadoes fans at home games. Kelly Froling's proving to be part-time recruiter, coaxing Jackson from the Canberra Capitals a week after enticing fellow Opals player Mariana Tolo, who will debut against Dandenong on July 2 if her clearance is approved in time. She's such a calm player on the court and has so much experience defensively as well. She's great, so she's just an all-around great basketball player. Elijah Thomas made his debut for the North West Thunder on the weekend, recording a game-high 24 points against the Melbourne Tigers. And there's more to look forward to, with Jack Jumpers trio Sean McDonald, Matt Kenyon and Fabian Krislevic all set to play together in Thunder Colours for the first time this weekend. I'm coaching... Um you know, professionals now, and I'm not even a professional coach myself. And that trio will be in the driver's seat for the second half of the season. To be honest, it's great because they can lead some of the stuff now. It takes a little bit of pressure off me. While the Hobart Chargers say goodbye to their jack jumper, Sam McDaniel will be gone for the next nine games for Boomer's duties. We just want to support him as best we can and um, hope, look forward to him coming back for the last three games of the season. A new player will be announced soon, while the women's side is facing a top versus bottom clash against the surging Mount Gambier. We've got a lot of players that are capable of playing roles, but don't quite have enough, I guess, top-end talent for us to consistently compete at this stage, and that's what we're trying to develop. Tasmanian discus thrower Jackson Mellor has won silver in the Pacific Mini Games. He threw 38.4 metres at the Games on the northern Mariana Islands, which is near the Philippines. He was the only Tasmanian in the 14-strong Australian team. Hobart will open the Tassie Tigers hockey one season against Brisbane in late September. Tasmania will also host Canberra and New South Wales in the six regular season matches. Eddie Ockenden is on board as assistant coach along with other internationally capped players. And I've brought people that are, that are high level sports uh, people from other codes that have come and watched and they've been amazed at the speed and the skill. The last hockey one season to get off the ground was back in 2019, where Tasmania claimed bronze. Good evening, Hobart and Devonport 13 today. Launceston and Burnie reached 14 degrees. Temperatures range from minus 2 at Tunnock to the high of 15 at Smithton. St Helens, Friendly Beaches, Bushy Park and the Islands all 14. Lowhead, Grove and Strawn 13. Lyawini a top of 9. A lot of temperatures just around about average for this time of year. A light shower over the west today. Cape Sorrel recorded 3 millimetres after heavier falls overnight. The clouds streaming across from the west. A fair bit of cloud over the southeast of the country as well. A band of high cloud extends over the bite ahead of more unstable air. Tomorrow a cold front will cross Tasmania. That high will now move off to the east. The winds northwest and northerly up to 20 to 30 knots around the entire coastline swells to three metres in the west and south. A strong wind warning has been issued for waters from South East Cape around the state back down to Tasman Island along with the South West Lakes. Into tomorrow we go on Hobart at top of 16 with showers developing. Showers on the way too for Signet, 15 the high, New Norfolk 15 as well. Launceston a high of 15 with showers, showers for Devonport, same temperature there. 14 the top for Campbelltown with showers developing. Burnie showery in 15, 15 for Strawn, showery and windy for Smithton, 15 the top as well. Also 15 for St Helens, a late shower for Swansea, 16 the high and 14 for Fingal. On Friday, partly cloudy over the east with a few showers easing from other parts, showers on Saturday but not really affecting the east, gusty northwesterly winds and on Sunday, snow lowering to 600 metres as showers contract later in the day to the west, central and south. The winds will shift southwesterly as well. And further north tomorrow as we have a look at the big map, 19 in Perth with showers moving over there, Adelaide a shower or two but clearing later, 18 the top, a cool one in Canberra, 13 the maximum, Sydney partly cloudy in 19, fine and sunny in Brisbane.
Partly cloudy in Hobart, currently 8. Launceston, 9 degrees at the moment. A bit showery in Devonport and 10. Kim, the numbers are in from this morning's swim at Sandy Bay. There was only a UV factor of 2, but a shrinkage factor of 10. Good night. That is all your news for now. Good idea. We'll be back later with updates. Thanks for joining us. Good night.